morning everybody it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery today let's get into a video all about making this beautiful soap which is inspired by the colors I absolutely love which is glamorous black gorgeous hot pink and of course the creamy white of soap so to get started we have a lot of bowls in front of me I do know but what I'm actually going to be adding in here is a little bit of bubble gum mica this one comes from sud off and basically to give you an idea how I actually work out my mica colors it's one flat tablespoon per every 500 grams of uh, soap mix so that's what I'm doing here and I'm just pouring in um, about three quarters of a tablespoon of oil I just use sweet almond oil Oil. you can take this out of your almond mixture but honestly the extra one tablespoon is really not going to change your soap mixture much so you can add an extra one it doesn't matter and now what I do is just you know make sure it's nice and um, all mixed in and that there's not too many um, blumps and bumps because when you have the lumps and bumps in this that will actually affect the end result later and we want it to be nice and smooth and the color to be gorgeous now I'm also going to be doing um, some unlucky black so in this spoon that I've got which is a different spoon here it's not a tablespoon it's actually a teaspoon so it's one and a half teaspoons of this but if you want a strong black you actually do need to add a good amount of mica otherwise it will be gray or it will like be a bluey kind of gray if you don't add enough you can also use activated charcoal but once again you need to use a lot of that uh, for this and I didn't want any activated charcoal in it so I'm just using the unlucky black mica from sud off and we'll mix that in and that's going to be my black portion once again it is around about one tablespoon per 500 grams of the soap mixture that you're using and all of my soap mixtures um, that I show from now on and quite some months ago as well it is all um, a palm free and a vegan soap unless I tell you that I put you know milks or something in it but generally they are a vegan uh, friendly soap as well and that way lots of people regardless of their beliefs or what they like they can also use my soap so now we have done the first bit haven't we we've mixed the colors set them aside now let's get and work on everything else in my container here I have my cooled down um, butters and all of my oils that are mixed into here so now let's get on to the next bit and organize everything else that you need to organize when you're making soap so it's always better just to have your stick blender ready and sitting in pour the lye directly over the stick blender it sort of helps with you know all those air bubbles and just the little bits that we want to do um, with the soap I know lots of people burp their stick, blend, stick blender which just means tapping it and releasing the air bubbles I don't generally do that a lot sometimes a little but not a lot I don't stress about that too much but if you feel that you know you need that of course do that and just tap out any air bubbles um, but I make sure mine is mixed super duper well when you pour in the lye it's also a great idea just to give it a little bit of a mix before you turn the blender on and um, you know but everyone finds their own way I've seen some soapers mix it really well first I've seen um, some soapers that just go straight into blending some blend from fast some blend in bursts I mean it really depends on how you want to do it and what works for you so no way is the right way everyone just find your way and you'll soon learn as a soap maker exactly how you're doing it and what you love to do with your soaping so I just have to get that out there that there is no right or wrong so please don't um, stress too much now we've just brought it to a light emulsion of course it is not super duper done because we want to mix in the colors again later and I don't want it to get too thick so now I'm just going to divide, divide this off pretty much in equal portions because what I'm going to be doing is doing like a splat look. And all that is, is literally you can just keep it into containers or you can put it into bottles and then you're just going to pour a little bit on each portion. So you would do a pink and then put the white on top, the black on top and so on until you get all these nice colors and it just does make a really nice look in the end. So we're going to pop it all into these and then of course we are going to stick blend each of these just so that they are a very similar consistency because to do this you need them to be pretty much the same. You don't want one watery and one not. 
Now you will notice in the white, I am just adding some white blizzard mica to the top. You can pre-mix this if you like. I was just a bit lazy and didn't, but usually I do pre-mix everything. Um, and you can see here that, you know, the mica and that comes to the top of the surface. And that's usually why you would mix it to sort of help that. So you don't have to deal with that or any lumps or bumps that don't mix in properly. But I am making this fairly thick, you know, I wouldn't say super thick, but fairly thick sort of assware going along maybe a medium sort of consistency and then we're going to just add in the fragrance oil i do know this oil is fairly good i'm actually using a peach and a spa mix together and a lot of my mixtures are not just one so this kind of has like a fruity scent of the beautiful peaches but it's also sweet and then it does have light notes of you know blonde woods and um, you know moss and that kind of thing so it's just a really nice calming kind of scent that I liked and this one is not going to be a part of my permanent range I really did it for YouTube so that I could show all of you just another technique and something that you can do that's really easy even a beginner could do this um, you don't need to stress too much about it I mean the main thing is I guess if you if your colors are too thick then you'll you'll start to panic so you know that's the thing try and keep them only to a medium consistency but if they're not um thick at all if they're like really watery sort of looking and you haven't mixed them enough the problem then is the colors will just blur into each other and won't be pretty so you do kind of need to work with it like this and the bubblegum pink that i'm working with from sud off i love it it's the most gorgeous color but it does thicken much faster than a lot of the other micas. So I have to really, really watch that one. It's definitely something that I've noticed with that mica. But um, like I said, it's a beautiful mica. I absolutely love it. So let's get all this ready and then we'll go on to the next bit, which is the technique. Now, if you want that technique that's really easy and just gives you that gorgeous look, this is what you're going to do. So you can see I'm just literally going to be pouring in, you know, little blobs. And that's why I call it a splat look because it does remind me of that. And then we're just literally going to be putting different colors in each. Look, you can use the bottles like I'm doing. But the one thing I noticed that in the bottle, it seems to thicken up really fast. And that's why I don't really like to use the bottle much. I prefer literally just to use it in a jug it's so much easier if things go wrong or it thickens up and one thing if it thickens up too much in the bottle then you've got the problem of trying to get it out of the bottle so you know it's just one of those things isn't it but either way it doesn't matter how you do it there's no right or wrong and you can see that I definitely have that medium consistency it's not too watery at all and then literally you're just going to basically alternatively sort of add your colors and you could do this with two colors you could do it with five but three is really good once you start working with five then you're under the pressure in case you know one of them thickens up too fast also you do want to make sure your fragrance does, is not super accelerating so if you have one that is a colored uh, sorry not colored if it's like a floral sort of um, fragrance that's definitely hard to work with so I'd steer away from that a bit and you know stick with ones that you know are really good I mean black you know your black raspberry I mean that's always one of those great ones isn't it because that one does not um you know thicken up it doesn't accelerate it doesn't discolor it's just known as one of those gorgeous ones but use whichever one you like and like i said play around with the colors and see what you like the good thing about this too is that blizzard that i've added in we'll just add that tiny speck of sparkle when we get to cut um this soap in between doing these as well you'll see that i just get the um you know the particular box that i'm using and then i just give it a bit of a tap in between because you definitely don't want the air bubbles so you want to make sure we've got no air bubbles and then you're just literally going to fill in the spaces as you can see me doing here just roughly you know going over and it really does turn out so beautiful the main thing I think with doing something like this is you want the colors to be vibrant it doesn't look as good if you have really light muted um mica colors so I definitely say get something bright and something that adds a contrasting kind of pop so that's what I've done in this one so we're going to keep going and we will finish this one off 
You're probably going to notice as well that I'm not using my standard mold. This one is just a bamboo tray that I've got and I've lined it myself. One of my latest videos will have how I actually line the tray. It's super easy so you can use any box you like to make soap as long as it is lined properly and obviously waterproof. So that's what I'm doing with this one because my idea was just to cut it in some blocks because like I said this one here is um, actually just for YouTube. It's nothing um, special in particular but that's what I'm doing with this one and if you want the recipe it will be over on Patreon but if you prefer just to watch my videos on YouTube that is more than okay too and you can go back to many of my other videos and there are recipes on them so just grab one of those recipes off and you can give this one a go but as most of you know from now on I am actually on Patreon because that definitely helps me and I'm hoping we'll be able to afford a beautiful camera in some time to come so that I can get even better shots and better voiceovers for you and those really close in gorgeous shots because that way you'll be able to see the colors and the textures much much better than um, my iPhone but if you want to film anything everybody I will tell you iPhones are a massive great start most of us have a smartphone now so you know start filming on anything like that do your reels and do your um, camera shots anything like that so you don't need a fancy camera to start with but I think after a few years I am definitely at that stage um, where we do need a bit more of a fancy camera just to show you guys some more shots so that I can bring some more videos over to you. A massive um, thank you to my VIPs and my Patreon members. I thought I have to add that in here because I don't often get a lot of chance to keep saying that in my videos to them. But a really big thank you. So go over and check out anyone. They're always listed at the end of my videos. And then you can see what those guys are up to and hopefully join their social medias too. So I've just splattered the extra bit of um, soap on the top here because then we're going to do this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful design and all you need is the end of a paintbrush, a chopstick, a knife, anything and then you can start to swirl it. So I'm just swirling it from one corner down to the other corner and the idea with this is you're not going to push this stick too far in, you're really only going to push it in like a centimetre because we don't want it to affect the colours that are at the bottom. So it's really only like a surface look, this pattern. So you go one way and then go the other way and then I like to just go around the edge just to make sure it's all off the edge. It makes it easier to cut it and get it out of this mould later. Now look how beautiful this colour is. I absolutely had to show you. I have added some gorgeous biodegradable glitter on top because I thought what is this gorgeous fun soap without some glitter. So like I said I've added all that onto that and now you can see me just adding a little bit more. The one I'm actually using here I think this is just like a blizzard. It's like a silver kind of colour. And often at Christmas time, they have more of this silver one. I only use biodegradable as well. And I get all of my glitters from Sud Off. But if you want them in a bigger bulk supply, they definitely do it. You just need to contact them and tell them you want to buy it in bigger amounts. And then they will help you from there. This particular glitter also comes from Sud Off. They do some coloured ones as well. So this is just a light um, pink sort of fairy dusted one, which I really do love it. It's so pretty. So like I said, we've done all this, haven't we? It's looking gorgeous. I think I did it in about a 1600 gram uh, mixture or 1.6 kilos. And I'm sorry if you're in the US and you're using ounces, um, but mine are always in grams because in Australia, we actually use grams. And uh, I'm really not very good with ounces, but you can easily pop it in a calculator and transfer it over to ounces if you're more comfortable with that. So like I said, a few little shots. Let's just show how gorgeous this is and let's open it up. So this is the next day now. And also you will notice that the colours will never be as bright once they um, start to cure. So um, don't ever think, oh, it's too bright because it's not. It will dull it down by at least five. Um, you know, I, I think it times is it by five uh, when it's wet compared to dry. That's what I kind of meant. So now all I'm going to do is just pull off the blue tack that I popped on the side and I can use that for next time. And then we're just literally going to slide it out of these molds. It's really easy with this bake paper. 
I actually just used one from my local supermarket. It's really cheap to line them. It's like maybe $4 for 20 odd meters or something. So it's not very expensive. But once you've used it once, you can't use it again because um, it just sticks to the soap. So you definitely can't use it twice. But it's good for every now and then. Otherwise, you have the silicone, which you can just rewash and do it again. So now let's just pop off the sides and you'll notice under the bottom, um, it's definitely got all of the circles that we did as well. So cutting it is going to be super duper fun. I mean, look how fun those circles are. You could even turn the soap the opposite way around if you want the circles on the bottom, you know, just to be on top of your soap. But I wanted something a little bit more fancy. And um, I usually don't do this kind of look on top, but I thought it looked really, really pretty. I hope you guys all think the same. So now let's get it ready and we're going to take it over to the cutter now. And like I said, we're going to cut it into, um, you know, little squares, I think. So now here is my beautiful cutter. This comes from AU Cutters. They're on Etsy if you want to go and um, see them on here. This is actually a splitter. So I actually like to use the splitter as a cutter and a splitter. I use it for both. Um, but I will go back and get myself a little single bar cutter as well. I don't actually have one. I just have the one my husband um, made me and this. But this has got a much thinner line on it. So it gives a much um, thinner sort of cut. But like I said, from here, all I'm going to do is literally just, you know, cut it all up. And I just decided to do it in small like um, block sizes because like I said this is not going to be an ongoing soap for me it was really for YouTube but of course I'll cut off the edges too so that I can give some samples away but once these are ready they will go on my website in their little block forms and people can buy them if they like but I'm definitely keeping one for myself because I just love the smell of this it's come out really really beautiful and the fragrances I have used are a peach one which I did get from Aussie Candles and then a spa type scent and then I actually got that one from Pure Candle Supplies and both of them do not discolor so if anybody is wanting to use any of those ones I'll tell you they're really good they don't discolor at all and they do not accelerate in soap which is fantastic to know as well so here we go i'm sure you can agree look how gorgeous and fun the middle of it is and the top of course just adds into that beautiful beautiful color as i said if you're wanting um to go over and get the recipe just go over to patreon and you will see the recipes there i usually put recipes and blogs and things like that into there so you'll see all of that information over there and a huge, huge thank you, like I said, to all of my beautiful Patreons over there. You can be a Patreon member from $5 right up to $20. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.